Good morning. Happy Easter. On a day that we celebrate the rising of Jesus Christ from the dead, it's my pleasure to read to you this week's scripture verse. And I have a little story to share with you as well. So today's scripture is from Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Let me read that again. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? I don't know about you, but sometimes people can be reading that scripture and go, saved from what? What did he save us from? I thought he saved us from sin. I thought, I thought he saved us from slavery. It seems scriptural to claim that he saved us from God's wrath as well. Now, over the last couple of decades, the word wrath, or specifically God's wrath, has been out of vogue. If you're a Christian, uh, many people would distance themselves from you. And in fact, many Christians would distance themselves from believing that God is a wrath for God. And that Jesus' death actually saves us from God's wrath. This leads us to my story, because I think this story can maybe help us a little bit in understanding what God's wrath is all about. Now, I wonder if any of you have ever left home uh, in a negative sense, uh, perhaps run away from home. I ran away from home once. I didn't pack my bags or anything like that. Um, and I wasn't intending to leave for good. But there was one time where I had an argument with my brother. And I must have been about 10 years old or something like that. And I was so upset with him that I just ran away. I uh, left the home. I went out. And uh, the place that we were living in uh, had uh, a big mountain um, and a lot of wilderness around it. And I just went into the wilderness. I ran away. I kept running until I was no longer angry. And I enjoyed actually, I enjoyed the time. I was able to do what I want, go where I want, uh, no matter uh, how much time this took me. I actually felt pretty good. I was okay. Even though I was in the, in the wilderness, I wrote in the sand, I did all sorts of things. I climbed trees. And eventually when it was time to leave, and I thought, well, I should probably get back home now. I was able to find my way home. And I got back home, safe and sound. But actually the situation where I uh, found myself at home was quite an interesting one because I encountered my father in a state that I had never ever seen him before in my life. He was angry with me. He was angry, so angry with me that I had left home and they couldn't, they didn't know what had happened to me and um, they, th they fear the worst, to be honest. And so, as I say, this was the worst, the most angry that I ever saw my father, and I was punished for it. For many time, for, for a long time after that, I was so angry with my father because I thought, how could he be angry with me? All I wanted to do was get away from my brother who was irritating me, and I just wanted to do what I wanted to do, and I should have been left to it. There's nothing wrong with that. And I can come back when I want and I can leave when I want. And so I hated my father for that. Now, many years later, uh, I hated him because he punished me for it. Many years later, I found out that actually what had happened in the interim time, the time when I was having a, a great time, you know, just enjoying myself, doing what I wanted. My father went to the most dangerous places in our town to look for me. Now, when I was growing up, there was many um, stories of people being kidnapped, horrific things happening to children, all sorts of things going on. And as I say, they feared the worst. And so instead of just sitting around waiting for me to come back home, hoping and praying that I would, my father had actually gone out looking for me. And he was willing to put himself in danger to find me. I think this story actually helps us in understanding God's wrath. When 
we think of God's wrath, we think of him as an angry tyrant, perhaps abusive father, that is willing to punish, is willing to exact revenge. And so it's not a very good idea to be thinking of ourselves as Christians who would want to serve this kind of God. But I think we must understand God's wrath when we think of it just in terms of anger. Because I saw my father angry with me um, for something that I wanted to do and I saw nothing wrong with it, um, I thought it was unfair. And so many people look at God as an angry God and we see him as unfair, a personal being that just wants to exact revenge and punish us for the things that we do wrong. But actually, if we look at the writer of Romans, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he's introduced the idea of wrath before. In the very first chapter of Romans, Paul speaks about the wrath of God. And the sense in which he describes God's wrath is, the, con the context of, of which is that it's an idea that he actually turns people over to suffer the consequences of their sin. You can see this from chapter 1 in Romans. And so the wrath of God uh, in one sense, yes, there's anger there, but in, in the most fullest sense is this act of giving the person over to what they chose freely to do. So if I was to think of my father as a wrathful father, my earthly father, the one who punished me, if I was really thinking of what he, he could have done as a wrathful father, he could have just let me... Uh, carry on living in the wilderness. He could have expelled me from the home and he could have said, right, this is what you wanted to do. You wanted to run away from home and you can stay there for all I can, uh, for all I care. But my father didn't do that. Not only was he willing to welcome me back, but he actually went in search of me. He went in search of his runaway son. And although my earthly father didn't find me and it was me who returned to him, I can confidently say that in the spiritual sense, I was a runaway from God as well. At certain points in my uh, Christian walk, in my upbringing, I didn't want to be close to God. And in some ways I ran away from him. But the message of the gospel is that God is a God who will run after you. He will not let you suffer his wrath to the fullest extent. And the way we know this is because we have the message of Jesus Christ. It is by his blood that we are justified. It is by his sacrifice and love that we are saved from the most extreme case of God's wrath. In being hand, instead of being handed over to our sin and everything that enslaves us and stops us from having a relationship with God, Instead of doing that, God came looking for me. Instead of that, God came looking for you. And so by faith, we can come back to the Lord. And this is the great message of Easter, actually. Because Jesus lives, because he rose again, we have hope that is real, that is borne out through evidence, and it is a faith that we can have confidence in. So I would commend those thoughts to you. Have a think about it. And I hope you have a good week. Let me pray. Dear Father God, we are all runaways in your eyes. But we thank you for the scripture that while we were once still sinners, you died for us. And because we were sinners, we can now be children. Because of you, your death, we can be your children. For we have been justified by your blood. We can return to you. We do not suffer the consequences of our sin in just being handed over to them. But Lord, you are the one who came looking for us. So Lord, I ask that you would encourage us this week. Draw near to those who would doubt. Draw near to those who have a fear of their father. And indeed, who have a fear of you as their father. Lord, you are a father in heaven. Yes, there is anger that we see in scripture, but there is also love. And it is all demonstrated with the mindset of showing us who you are and drawing us close to you. You would seek to keep us from the things 
that would hurt us. You would seek to rescue us from the consequences of our runaway lifestyle. And so, Lord, Lord, I ask that you would be with each of us this week. May we walk in your love and in the life that you have given to us as a result of Jesus' death and resurrection. Thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's all from me. Have a good week.